I lived in Thailand for over ten years, and I traveled all over Thailand except Phuket. I did work over there as well for a university first in Bangkok. Then I moved to Chamburi at a slightly smaller school, although it's very big. But I kind of worked on and off, not a hundred percent, to keep my money going. I also worked up in Chamburi for I think about two years, maybe three. But it made the money that I'd saved up last a lot longer. And Doggett sort of suggested that I should make a kind of a series or a few videos about it, just to help people out who thinking about going to Thailand. And I would say it's probably one of the best experiences I had in my life. And I'm going to start this video about how I was actually introduced to Thailand in the first place, because initially it was just a holiday to Thailand for three weeks. My friend and I just walked into a travel agent, you know, before you used to go online all the time, and asked the guy, "Have you got a holiday that's a reasonable price, has hot sunny weather, and is relatively cheap when we get there?" And the guy behind the desk didn't hesitate. He said, "Thailand." So my friend and I booked it right there and then. It's funny though because I was kind of dubious about the place, thought it may be a little bit unsafe. Don't forget, this is going back probably twenty-five, thirty years, and of course you won't believe our air carrier. It was Aeroflot. <laughs> so wonder we got there alive, but we did. One of the first things I noticed straight away when you walked out of the plane was the heat, and it doesn't actually cool down that much in the evenings either, especially in Bangkok. What we did was we booked a hotel for three days in Bangkok. Before we left the UK, then we were planning on heading to Pattaya and just get a hotel on the fly. It's usually cheaper that way. Now I can't remember the name of the hotel, but the local areas around were the Nana Plaza, Soya Cowboy, and of course we had to go see Koh San Road too. It's funny because we got a taxi from Bangkok Airport to the hotel, and the taxi driver handed us some cards with pictures of femons on them. And was offering us a femon already, and that these femons would come to our hotel room as soon as we get in. <laughs> oh, I liked the service. I think at the time it was a thousand baht per femon. But after quite a long flight that we had, the direct flight usually takes about eleven to twelve hours, sometimes a little bit longer. We weren't really ready for that straight away, so we decided to decline the offer. But it sure seemed like a pretty good start to a holiday. For two miles, that's unattached miles. That is. So we got to the hotel, and it was okay. Nothing real plush. Everything was pretty good and basic. And it was close to all the places, like I said, Nana Plaza, Soya Cowboy. We kind of cleaned up and rested a bit, and then we headed out fairly early. And the first thing we did was look around the stalls on the streets. At that time, there was just nothing but copies of everything, like Levi's and all sorts of clothes, all knockoff and knockoff prices too, which of course you can barter with. That was the fun part. And what I noticed kind of straight away when I was out walking about, that there seemed to be at least ninety-five percent good-looking, slim femons walking around. Nearly every one seemed to be attractive, and they had a beautiful smile. And these femons actually noticed you, acknowledged you were there. Not like it was in the UK; they walked straight past you. So I guess it'd be about 9 p.m. by now. So we went to the Nana Plaza, which is a big square that you go into with about five or six floors, and you can walk around each floor, which has probably about maybe 20 to 30 bars on each level. And we noticed that the further you go up the floors. The femons got older and older. The best ones are the two bottom floors where the young femons are. I guess they get relegated as they get older. <laughs> Generally, there'll be femons outside trying to get you to come in. So I guess we went into one of these bars that the femons were just overly attractive outside, and we went in and sat down. And of course, a femon came over, ordered our drinks, and she brought them to us. In every place in this Nana Plaza, you usually have dancers who have big numbers on their sides 
and dancing either a pole or dancing in a line. And you can ask one of these dancers over after she's had her dance and you can buy her a drink so she can talk with you. But when it's her turn, she still has to go dance because you haven't paid the bar for this yet. And I'm sure it's gone way up by now. But at that time, the bar fine was 300 baht. And the price of the femon, if you want to go that far, is usually between 800 and 1500 baht. Of course, it depends if she's going to stay all night or not. You can get them quite a lot cheaper if you go in there late, but then you're just left with what's left, if you know what I mean. Two guys on holiday with femons everywhere, with lots of money in their pockets. Money wasn't an issue. Anyway, I believe I found my girl that I liked first. So I paid the bar fine and I took this girl to another couple of bars for my friend to try and find a girl he liked. Finally, he found one. We went for a few more drinks and then went back to our hotel for a little bit of uh, hanky-panky. Anyway, about 10 o'clock in the morning, I hear the knock on my door. So I go to the door and open it. It's my friend. He wants to go for breakfast. And as I still had my femon with me, I said, where's your femon? He said, it didn't actually work out that well. She left an hour after she got back there. You see, femons can be flighty, even there. Or maybe she just kind of knew that my friend was a cheap Charlie. Anyway, I thought I'd buy my femon some breakfast at our hotel we were at. Then she asked me if I'd go to her bar that night and I said, well, just have to wait and see. I paid the femon and off she went. Just to let you know, the beer I was drinking at the time was Singha, which is the local beer and a reasonable price. You can buy Heineken, all sorts of European and other brands, but they're far more expensive. And also to let you know, when you go to the bar, you buy a drink, they give you a little pot and they put the ticket in the pot. You don't pay until you leave. There has been a few issues where people just have left and forgot about paying, but they don't get far. Anyway, that was kind of the first day uh, just to test out this sort of thing and see if it's interesting enough to make any more. I'm sure you'll let me know. If I do another one, it won't be day by day. It'll just be experiences that I had over time. And there's been some doozies, let me tell you. <laughs> If I can remember them. So you want long time or short time? I want long time at short time prices. You are cheap Charlie. You better believe it.